one the monitor that we start on the slides. Um, first of all, welcome to the day one of UConn and welcome to my talk, Journey Through Time, Understand its Provisions and Resource Origins and Other Things. Uh, I'll start with an introduction to me. Uh, my name is Priyanka Sapa and I'm from India. I work at Sule as a Kubernetes Integration Engineer and I'm also the release in for Kubernetes 1.29 recycle um, and I'm also a technical lead for special interest for the connector experience. So what are we going to explore today? Uh, this talk is going to discuss um, this whole thing about how resource versions in Kubernetes objects maps down to something called revisions in XOP. And that is going to be our discussion for this particular talk. Uh, we'll learn what are revisions in XOP and how um, we'll take the entire journey from revisions all the way to the source versions and So, uh, starting with Kubernetes, this is how a Kubernetes does it look like. Uh, this is from the Kubernetes documentation and forward to our things. So, that's a point of that. Do you remember the um, cooking? Here, for this particular talk, what I want to mention is every time we interact with a Kubernetes cluster, on the only component we can interact with is the Kubernetes API server. Either we are doing it through view CDL client or the web UI and managed cluster, or maybe using programming language SDKs. Uh, what we are doing is we are sending REST APIs, and those REST APIs, APIs are going to the API server. And every time there is a change in the Kubernetes cluster, that change is stored in persistent storage there called, in this particular case, XD. Another the so, for this talk, we are going to talk about XID and what is XID. XID is a distributed reliable key value store uh, for the most critical data of a distributed system. Um, in this case, we are talking about Kubernetes as the distributed system case. So, for this talk, we will travel all the way from a Kubernetes object. Here, I have a screenshot from a company I ran in my government to see here get deployment into next deployment and I'm trying to get out to the YAML format. We'll move all the way from understanding where is this resource version coming from and going back to exactly where it's coming from, which is XCD. So this is going to be the discussion. So let's start with what are the XCD permissions. So revisions acts as a snapshot for object state in the key values. So for example, in Kubernetes, every time uh, we are creating any uh, resource objects or we are modifying them, we are deleting them, any, any kind of uh, change that is happening, so all those snapshots for us in the Kubernetes uh, are stored in the key value store and in case of XD, they are stored as revisions. Um, revisions are 64 bit. Uh, Clock that is maintained by uh, XCD and it actually stores uh, all the values that is changing the state of XCD. So the key, uh, it, when we are talking about XCD as a key value store, the key is the revision, the row counter that is always implemented. So one thing to understand from this law, uh, revisions are always implemented. Uh, so that in our key value store XCD, revisions and anything that is changing the state of our XP key value store becomes a value mark to that key. And I want to show how that data is stored inside XP in an example. So this is my setup. I have a local container here running uh, from the Vietnami XP image and I'm just exiting inside that local container. Uh, I'm adding a few tools here, uh, curl, uh, so also downloads another tool called JQ, JSON query, and that is what I'm doing here. Uh, this is the URL and this is what I'm doing is find the latest version of JQ, um, put, putting it down, making it executable, and making it up in my file. We have a uh, command line tool, etcdc here, etcdc here, that is what we can use to interact with our key value store. Um, here I am setting up an one variable called EDCDCTL API. Then my uh, client that I will use uh, one to make version 3 API. Mm -hmm. 
since we just created a new container, uh, our key value store is empty. And we can check that uh, on the status here from our input. What I don't want you to look at is the header section. That is going to be the most important part for us. Um, and even in that header status that vision that is uh, highlighted here, currently you can see our vision is one. That means uh, we, we don't have anything. All we have is we have created and we have uh, initiated our SD. Let's try to add something inside this um, key value store. Um, here, what I'm doing is I'm adding five values, something like foo one, bar one, all the way to foo five, bar five. And I'm trying to retrieve some information from here. If I just run etcdctl get dot, I don't get anything. But if I try to get it in a JSON format, what I will see is this output. Here we can see our revision has incremented and it has incremented by five. That means every time we added a new key value pair for one bar one that incremented our counter by one. And since we added five key value pairs, um, our increment, um, our counter was incremented by five. So now at this point, after adding five key value pairs, our etcd revision counter is at six. Here, um, if you recall, we added values uh, of the form foo1 bar1 all the way to foo5 bar5. Here I'm uh, asking etcd um, uh, to give me all the values that are prefixed with foo. So here we can see, uh, we'll just here, for in this example, we'll try to understand how whenever we added one key value pair, for example, when we added foo1 bar1, how uh, that changed our etcd key value store. So, it is going to show all the key values on which are coming on that side. Uh, that's the key KVS array. Sorry uh, for the space here. Um, I'll try to show all the key value pairs that are coming here. So we can see we have revisions uh, set to six here. That's what we already discussed. And that is our first key value pair that was added. Here we can see when we started, our revision was set to one. When foo one bar one key pair was added, our revision was two at that point because we added a new uh, change. We changed the state of our key value and we got those uh, three fields in our, uh, attached to our key value pair as well. Uh, create revision, mode revision, version. So what create revision is, it's the revision of etcd at which this key value pair was created in the key value in etcd. So when we added uh, foo1 one bar1, one, uh, it was incremented by one and it got the create revision as two. It did not get any modification so far, so mode revision is also two right now, but if it had received any modifications after, that would be set to the revision at which this key value pair was last modified. And uh, version is also set to one, this, this means this is the first version. If there were modifications, uh, the version counter would have incremented. If there is a deletion, it would be reset to zero. And uh, above and below, we are seeing the key value pairs. So this was the first key pair we added. Same is for uh, foo2 two bar2. Two. We, we can see our in, uh, that got create revision as three because that was the state of, uh, that was the revision of etcd at that point when foo2 two bar2 two key uh, pair was created and so on for all the way to the last pair foo5 five bar5. Five. You can also see it is also giving us the count of our um, uh, key values or whatever data is stored inside our um, etcd key value store at this point. So that is five. Let's try to delete one key now. Um, let's try to delete the first key pair we added, which is foo1 bar1. And when I ran this command, etcd ctl delete uh, foo1, we see we got this revision bumped up by one. So even though we removed something, our revision is not decrementing, it is bumping up. So Again, our revisions, uh, the revision counter in etcd is always ever uh, incrementing. We also see another new field here, deleted one. What it is doing is, it is adding a tombstone value to our uh, key value pair here. What that tombstone value will do now is, it will uh, tell us, tell our etcd ctl client, now please ignore. Whenever somebody is asking you to query all the values in, in the key value store, just please ignore, uh, it is deleted. So there will be some snapshot of that key value pair still be there in our key value store, but since we have marked it um, with a tombstone, uh, we'll not get that. 
value now. So if I try to get all the um, data now, prefix with key foo, I'll not get foo one because that now has a tombstone marker attached to it. So now we have deleted this key, but we know that that key was present in our key value store at some point, and that is the interesting part of etcd. Um, etcd is maintaining all the uh, changes that are happening in different revisions. So we and we can use that um, to time travel back uh, and and check out what are the past state. And this is helpful in scenarios like, for example, we had a crash, we had a failure, and now we don't know what was the state of our uh, particular object at maybe what was the last known state and what we can do with it say is it will just pull off whatever whatever was the last known state present uh, it will assign that revision and we can just get the state of that object from there so let's try to do that here we know at revision 7 is that is the revision when we actually deleted our uh, foo one key pair and we do not see anything here at this point. There is no key value array here. But if I go back one revision, if I ask it to give me a revision, uh, uh, the value of foo one bar one key pair at revision six, I'll be able to get my data here. So I can see there is, it is giving me a key value pair, um, which is uh, set to, uh, which has a create revision of two, more revision of two. And that is exactly the value that is, the time when we had created the foo one bar one pair for the very first time. So we know that this key should not be present. Uh, it has a tombstone marker. What now if we recreate that key? What will happen now? So let me just go ahead and uh, run this command and, and let's say uh, I, I gave another value, a new value to our uh, old key foo one and I, I just set a value here bar one new. Again, we know uh, revision counter is ever incrementing, so uh, revision is now eight. And I'll use some tool that comes from the etcd repo itself uh, to just check the row state of our database, that uh, the key value um, registry. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm cloning the etcd repo, um, just going inside the tools rep tools uh, folder. There is a tool, handy tool called etcd dump db, building that and. I'm also grabbing out the database uh, from the container I created. Now with this new tool that I have, I'm trying to decode or just, just get a more cleaner version of uh, a readable version of whatever database we retrieve from our container. So this is what I'm getting out of our container at this point. We can see all the way from bottom to up, uh, uh, we have uh, on the left side, we have something called revisions, ref equals, and then there is on the right side, we have value. So we can see revisions are our, is our key here in uh, case of etcd, and that whole thing uh, after value is a value assigned to every revision here. And we can see our revisions are incrementing from bottom. So we started at two and we went all the way to eight with all the operations we have done so far, and it is incrementing. Um, we can also see here, uh, let's start with second. That was the first time we created the pair foo one bar one. And we can see it was created at second. That is the value we get in create revision. We are also getting the more revision version values. Now, if we jump to the um, revision main seven, this is the time when we deleted our um, foo one bar one key pair. And we do not see a value here. That is, uh, and, and our version is also zero. That is how Tombstone uh, is applied. Now, you know, every time somebody will ask for a foo one key pair, at if at they are asking for uh, the, the data at revision seven, they'll not get it. But we created the pair again at revision eight, and we can see now, the interesting part is, we can see the created revision is eight. So it did not, uh, consider that foo one was already there, already present at some point in the key value store. No, it just uh, uh, registered it as a whole new key pair. And it was, since it was created at revision eight, it got the create revision and more revision both set to eight. And the version is one since it's, a, it's being treated as a whole new pair. There is another concept of um, compaction here. Um, so we, we just saw, 
our data is in, uh, being stored inside etcd in a sequential manner and if we talk about any distributed system for example kubernetes we are talking about thousands of operations thousands of state changing operation happening in let's say in a minute maybe millions in an hour and we do not want to fill our key value store just with all those um, regular like day to day tasks that are happening we want to keep our um, data safe or whatever is required so there is a concept called compaction in etcd and what we can do is we can ask etcd to remove everything that has a tombstone value for example if i just go back here we attach the tombstone at revision 7 and i i can ask etcd look before uh, revision 8 look for all the key value pairs that has a tombstone attached to it and all the occurrences related to that key value pair and remove them that is what is compaction here so here i'm doing the same thing i'm asking it's uh, edcd to compact before uh, everything before revision 8 and what i get as a result of that is um, I, I took a new a refresh copy of my database in the first command and down what i'm getting here is our revision second and revision seven is removed from our um, output because uh, that is no longer relevant that that has a had a tombstone attached to it and uh, it can it is safe to be ignored at this point i'd say you cdl also has a watch uh, we can so watch here means we can start a watch on all the changes that are happening on a key value pair and let's try to understand this here um, i have two terminals here let's say uh, on the terminal side i'm starting a watch and here i'm putting up a new key value pair foo one bar one update so this is what i'm doing is at revision eight we created our foo one uh, key value pair again and now i'm updating that and what i see on the right hand side is our revision is bumped by one so now our revision is nine create revision is still eight because that was the time our key was last created again mode revision is now set to nine because it now got updated and version is two because now we this is the second version this is a new update uh, if i do it again if i set another uh, value to foo one I'll, I'll see the same changes here also revision is 10 mode version revision is 10 and version is bumped to three but what if i go ahead and delete it what i'll get is there is no create version anymore uh, only thing we are getting is a mode revision that this is the revision at which this key was deleted and value is some garbage there is no value at this point uh, so this is the time where uh, this uh, key pair has a tombstone attached to it and so tying it all together we just learned about etcd how data is being stored inside etcd but our uh, title of this talk is understanding re kubernetes resource version and etcd revisions so let's tie it all together to kubernetes now here i'm creating a kubernetes cluster with kind uh, just doing the same thing going in uh, have a clone of etcd um, just building etcd ctl and i'm coping this binary that i just built on my host machine in, into our um, control plane of our kind cluster that we just created above and one more thing i'm doing here is um, i am using our nginx deployment yaml that is available from kubernetes project and um, i'm just doing a apply action on that so we'll, what we are getting is we we are just um, creating a deployment with three replicas in our new, newly created cluster. Let's try to now um, inspect our new, newly created Kubernetes deployment object using kubectl first. Here, what I can see is this is a redacted version uh, of the entire output, but uh, what we need is the value on the right, right hand side. We see a field called resource version that is currently set to 1626. And we want to understand how this is coming back from uh, etcd. So here I am executing inside into my Kubernetes uh, cluster control plane. Again, I'm adding my JQ, and that's a handy tool to uh, decode our key value pair values. And since this is a Kubernetes cluster and our etcd is um, installed with uh, certificates attached to it, I'm just putting this entire uh, certificate values uh, into an alias e so let's try to 
get the same deployment value that we just we just deployed a new nginx deployment into our new cluster let's try to grab that value from etcd now and how etcd store kubernetes um, objects is somewhat like on that path slash registry slash deployments uh, it's like the registry the kind of object um, namespace and yeah so we are asking it find out anything uh, that's there in the define find out any deployment that's there in the de default namespace and give me the keys um, from there and what i'm getting out of there is that uh, again going back to the kvs arrays um, we are getting a key which is uh, which has a string attached to it registry deployments default nginx deployment that is the deployment we just created and it has a create revision uh, set to some value 1533 but we know when we are uh, deploying uh, let's say we when we are applying a kubernetes uh, deployment yaml it it has may, maybe multiple replicas attached to it so a lot of uh, changes must have happened on it maybe a new replica was created and there were a lo lot of series of operation happened so that was the last revision at which the last uh, change happened and it was stored in etcd and that is what we are getting out from here uh, more revision and if we recall uh, the object we just saw back here uh, uh, in our last slide we also saw the resource version also has a similar value to what we saw here more revision so we can conclude here is um, etcd mode revisions are what we are getting back as um, kubernetes resource versions we can also try to check here with uh, another watch we can run a watch uh, on one side using kubectl another from uh, uh, at CDCTL client. Uh, one thing to understand is uh, whenever HCD uh, runs a watch uh, or implements a watch, it is we need to tell it what is the next revision, start watching from there. So what I'm doing on the right hand side is I'm trying to grab the current revision, adding uh, current revision of whatever is the uh, deployment present uh, with the key registry deployments default. And I'm adding an increment to that and I'm asking etcd, please start watching from that next increment, all the changes that are happening. So this is what I'm getting from kubectl. Um, watch when we applied our YAML, this was the first event that happened. Uh, our first um, replica, whatever, some, some object, some resource object was added and that was the resource version set to it, 2966. Same is the case with etcd. Uh, when the first addition uh, operation happened, this was the first uh, event that was added in our, or key, key value pair that was added in our etcd key value store. We can see um, both the create revisions and mod revisions are uh, 2966, which is exactly equal to a resource version, which we got from kubectl and that is because this is the first event and there is a series of event that had happened after that uh, so we we are saying okay something was modified maybe another replica was created and it got that signal back uh, so we can see uh, that is also being reflected in our etcd watch as well uh, create revision is still 2966 but our mode revision is now being bumped to whatever is the latest revision at which etcd state was changed and there is a version bump here so let's try to grab this entire Kubernetes database that we are just talking about, whatever values we are getting from here in etcd. Uh, let's try to see what, what does it look like. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm trying to, again, copy uh, uh, the database from our, key, our etcd key values registry from um, our kind cluster control plane container. And I'm using the same tool again, etcd dump db to uh, check how does it look like and this is how it looks like there are million of things happening and um, most of these things are regular things um, kubernetes is deleting most of these things every maybe 10 minutes you can uh, as an admin uh, configure etcd to even do more compactions most of these are I will not go into uh, the concept of leases but there are leases happening leases being released uh, most of these are those modifications. So there's a lot of um, care, care stuff happening here, but 
there are objects here as well and uh, I have just tried to grab one of on there and that also looks somewhat like this and let me just try to trim it to a more readable version here. This is how our Nginx deployment, um, at least the, the first one when uh, we just added uh, our object to the key value store, this was the first entry that was added to our key value store. So we got a revision key here, which is set to 2968. Um, we got a value that that value is also reducted. It's a huge um, value, uh, in, mostly in a proto buffer format and I just reducted it for the sake of readability here and we are seeing created mode R2968 equal to the very first resource version we got. Uh, yeah, and, and version two is our, it, it's the version. So it, it was the very first uh, change that happened on our um, Nginx deployment resource object. So that was the first version bump we got from there. So concluding from this thing that I learned, this is what blew my mind. Um, this was the first time I learned that uh, the fact that my entire Kubernetes cluster is just coming down to this etcd dump and all my Kubernetes resource objects, anything, namespaces, deployments, ports, CRDs, everything is stored inside uh, this persistent data storage layer, in this case etcd, and that is what I'm seeing in this dump. So all I'm seeing is uh, that key value pairs and that is exactly what my Kubernetes cluster is made up of. Uh, so it's, it's okay to conclude my uh, Kubernetes cluster is nothing but a collection of YAML files which with all this data stored in as multiple revisions in etcd. Um, I want to thank Michael Gash. Uh, I got the inspiration of this talk. I learned uh, about this concept from this particular talk. There is a great article, um, a blog article uh, also attached to this that has more details. So thank you to Michael Cash and that thank you so much for the talk. <laughs> and before I forget, this is the QR code. Please scan it for feedback. Thank you. And I'm open to questions. The mic is somewhere in the middle if uh, somebody wants to take it. Check one. Yep. So I've noticed we're using a number of operators that appear to use washes. They'll often come back failing, stating that the resource version was too old or is otherwise out of date. I'm not sure as an administrator, and Google has not been helpful, if I should be worried about this or what I should be doing about this, or if it's just noise as things roll off. Um, sorry. I did not hear the question properly. Uh, can you repeat again? So, while well, we're using a number of operators, picking on Rook specifically, they appear to use watches internally, and they come up and are constantly complaining that the resource version is too old on their watches. I assume that's because it's getting cleaned up. Y yeah, uh, so XCD had a different, different implementation of not let's say skipping all the revisions that are happening, but this was an intended, at least from what I have learned so far, uh, this is an intended behavior. We, we are uh, intentionally skipping everything uh, and going back to all the way to the revision where we know this was the best stable state of that particular object. I think that's a design decision here and that is an intended decision. Thank you. Mm, thanks for the great talk. Um, during compaction, um, does it also remove the redundant modifications? So does it kind of only, does it, if you have changed the object three times and then after that you compact, will the two unnecessary times be removed or not? I need to check that. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I have uh, multiple questions. First, first thing, you know, are we confining the HCD database to a specific size? Like what I see is 8 GB is the max. Why is there a limitation of 8 GB for HCD? Well, um, I am not the HCD expert here. So um, I honestly don't know why, if, if there is a limit at all, uh, but 
if, if there is a specific use case you are talking about, can you clarify more? Maybe there are people here who can add. Okay. And uh, is there an auto defragmentation that happens always? Uh, auto defragmentation as in what? I mean, you know, you, we have a compaction, there is a fragmentation, and then we generally have a defragmentation, right? Any time the HCD fills up, we generally do a defrag. So you can configure HCD for uh, at least I know auto, uh, like like regular compaction. I am not aware of there is a concept called defragmentation or fragmentation, but I'm assuming if there is a configuration available for uh, the, yeah. If so you can, as an admin of HCD, uh, configure how how often you want to uh, do the compaction. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, kind of a vague question, so if you can't answer it, that's okay. Um, when we look in Kubernetes, we see a resource version, which is the etcd revision, which is really interesting to me. Thank you for explaining that. Um, it looks like an etcd, though, each key also has a resource version, which is specific to that key, right? Two, three, four, five. So I guess my question is, can you give some context for why, when we look at it in Kubernetes, we want to see the global resource, the, the global etcd revision number instead of the revision number for the individual key? Um, you mean why we are getting the resource version as uh, the mode revision value and why not the one that is on the left hand side? Yeah, so like uh, if we look at like Foo5 here, um, when we look at that in Kubernetes, we get a resource version of six, right? Because that's the etcd revision number, the mod revision number for when it was created. Um, I could see another world where we would get a resource version of one because that is the version associated with um, Foo5 here in the etcd database. So I'm just trying to understand why, from a conceptual level, we, we want to receive six there, the etcd revision, or the etcd revision number and not the uh, version number of the particular key in etcd, if that makes sense. Um, so I'll try to repeat what I understood. Uh, you are talking about why are we getting the mode revision and I did not understand, uh, like, I don't know what, which line you took as an example. Like, for example, if I have an object, uh, I'm talking about the one which is rev main six, for example, there on the left, right hand side, the mode is also set to six. So that whatever we are getting um, as a resource version in Kubernetes, that's basically telling us that's the last revision of etcd where that object state was changed. So whatever changed that object uh, state in etcd, whatever was the revision of etcd at that point, that is what we are getting out of resource version. Sure. That makes, makes Thank sense. Thank you. And with that, I think um, I'm done with my time. Thank you so much for coming to the talk. Thank you.